Today we're looking at Ferrari's 50th anniversary supercar, the Ferrari F50. One of the five Ferrari supercars. This is really the quintessential mid-90s supercar, being built from 95 to 97. This car, 1995. The F50s have always been looked over a little bit. I don't know if it's just the design. They're not as striking as the F40. They're not the Ferrari Enzo. They don't have the boss's name on them. But lately, they've been being dragged up simply because of the low production numbers. 349 built, making them less obtainable for the guys who wanted to bring the family of five together in their garage. Why I think this car is so special is the F1 derived engine. They took the 3.5 liter 60 valve V12 that they ran in the 1990 641 Ferrari in the 1990 season with Alan Prost. They increased the size of it to a 4.7 liter and they stuck it in this thing giving this thing 512 horsepower and a top speed of over 200 miles an hour. Very important for the time. As far as the options for these go, Rosso Corsa, this color, by far the most common, 302 built. Second was yellow with 31 built. Then eight, Rosso Barchetta, which was a dark red. And then four, Argento Nürburgring, which is silver. And finally, four Nero Daytona cars, which was black. The F50's design evolved from the 1989 Ferrari Mythos, which was a concept car. Thank God they built this thing and they didn't build that Mythos. Ferrari built on their lightweight success of the F40 and increased the carbon for the F50, making it a true carbon tub and a full carbon body. And actually, that's how you can tell if these cars are original paint. You look closely and you can see the carbon weave. If we look at the wheels and the brakes, Pretty dated design on the magnesium alloy wheels, titanium hubs, cross-drilled cast iron rotors, and a four-piston Brembo caliper. You couldn't imagine having cast iron rotors on a supercar today. That's just ridiculous. But that's all they had at the time. This was the last Ferrari supercar with cast iron rotors before they went to the full carbon ceramic rotors like you see on the Enzo. The F50 was the first supercar that came with a removable hardtop. You could actually take the hard top off, put it in the big circus box, and then put the soft top on. If you were one of the guys that took this hard top off, decimating the beautiful look of this car, and ran this thing as a convertible, that's just not right. The first thing you notice when you get in is all the beautiful carbon fiber on the interior, and then this kind of goofy 90s water park material. The wheel, nothing that surprises you. Classic Ferrari Momo style wheel. Just looks like a scaled up Formula One wheel of the time. Carbon fiber everywhere. I mean, that was the MO. Make this thing a real supercar, as lightweight as possible. Obviously no stereo, no gauges, really nothing. Two dials for your climate control, that's it. If you owned an F40 at the time and then you bought this F50, it really wouldn't surprise you. Real door handles instead of a wire. You know, they weren't just building a race car. They must have got some feedback about the F40 being a little bit too much of a race car. The seats scream 1996. Classic Ferrari gated shifter. You'd be right at home if you owned a TR and then you got one of these things. There's only three toggles on the left here. Defog, fog lights, and a toggle to raise the front end of the car. You never want to be the guy pulling up to the party and lose the nose on the F50. Feeling the pedals here, the thing feels like a race car. Pedals are super tight. You'd almost want to really wear driving shoes. You're able to toe heel with ease, making any race car driver feel at home in this thing. Two other items beautifully stowed away on the passenger side floor, the tire sealant bottle and the fire extinguisher, both branded in Ferrari bags. One of the things that really sticks out is the goofy shape on the rear view mirror. I mean, it's painted the same color as the exterior and it looks like they tried to design it for aero or something. I guess if you're one of those goofy people who took the top off, you'd want that. The carbon fiber on the doors, I mean the weave and the seams, they're not perfect, but they did what they were supposed to, save weight. As far as storage goes in this thing, this is a supercar. It's not meant for road trips. Little pockets on either door, and a nice little Velcro pouch in the center. That's it. All right, let's have a look in the engine compartment. Not quite as light as I thought it would be. Guess a lot of the weight is in the wing. Again, so much carbon fiber. These huge carbon fiber wheel wells look awesome. And with the wishbone suspension and the engine pushed so far forward, you can actually see right through down to the ground. 
Ferrari really wanted to show off what was underneath the hood of this thing. They have a massive clear piece here, so you can see right down into the engine. And they have a see-through grille on the back, leaving nothing to the imagination. Again, all sorts of places you can see the carbon fiber weave through the paint. Turn the key, press the starter button below, you know this thing's gonna sound badass. You fire it up and you see the cluster, and it reminds me of the first video game I ever owned. What was a space age looking supercar for the time is now a perfect 90s time capsule. You know, someone said to me, it looks like an F40 that just went too fast and the edges started to melt. Now we get to the part where I ask, do you need a car like this? No, no one needs a supercar. But do you want a car like this? Well, if you're a Ferrari collector and you have four of the five supercars, or if you just have a heartbeat and brain cells and just over $3 million, yeah, you want a car like this. Thanks for watching. Be sure to drop a like and a comment now to help our channel get seen. Hit subscribe and check out our other videos for more legendary motor cars.